Hey everybody, am I on? I never know if I'm on with these sorts of things. Um, but I will uh, hang out here until I start to see people pop up. Uh, maybe, maybe somebody's gonna pop up soon. We'll see, uh, I don't know. And uh, we're gonna do some prayer tonight and just wanna talk to you about something real quick. Uh, we're gonna be short, so no need to um, think this is going to go on all night or anything like that. Uh, but Brad Flack, I just want to thank Brad. Uh, he is a faithful brother, and he has been doing uh, these nightly prayers uh, since the whole thing has uh, started with the coronavirus. And so uh, he's had several people uh, come along and, and host, um, but Brad has been uh, very good to um, help us to keep centered. And so as a uh, brother in Christ and as a guy that's in uh, our church and our community group, uh, I really appreciate him. He is a loyal dude. So uh, here we are. You know, we got a few people signing on here. And uh, first thing I'm going to do is going to say, and I'll I'll kind of repeat this as I as I talk tonight, but uh, I'm in my car. My wife and I just had a date, uh, which is fantastic. We haven't had a date in a while, but uh, somebody, um, big shout out to Amy Maddox, uh, watched our kids, uh, um, and <clears throat> we were able to get out of the house and do some drive through in Brescia. So if you haven't been to Embrija, uh it's a great restaurant anyway. They're basically set up like Sonic right now, so you just pull up, they'll take your order, and you drive away. So, uh, big uh, shout out to Ambrisia. Uh, they're over in uh, off Luetta and 45 area. So, definitely go out there, visit them, get out of the house. Uh, Faith and I were able to sit at a uh, park and eat our uh, eat our dinner and talk uh, without any kids. And so. Really excited about that. Uh, Brad says Embrija. Um, yeah, so he's excited about that as well. But hey, listen, um, first things first. Uh, coronavirus is crazy. We're all, uh, you know, we're all experiencing this. There's nobody in the world exempt from the effects of what's happening with the coronavirus and the quarantines throughout the earth. And so uh, in, one, in one real sense that we are uh, together in this uh, fight, um, that uh, we have some unity where there's so much disunity today. And so I just, uh, in a sense, I just thank God that he's been able to drive us together in, in this way, that, that there's something that we don't have to argue about. Now, certainly, if you watch politics, there will certainly be able to turn this into an argument. But generally speaking, I feel like the public um, are walking through this together, and I've, I've been encouraged to see how uh, men and women have been giving up their time and their resources to serve one another um, and going out of their way to serve one another. And I think that people are um, better off for it. And so um, that's just what I had to say. Uh, one thing I'm going to do is uh, throw out real quick. Um, if any of you have any prayer requests, we're going to pray in a minute uh, together as a family. If any of you have any prayer requests, I just want you to throw that up here as a comment and say, hey, pray for me in this way. I've got anxiety here. My family's in this place. We have these needs that aren't being met. Uh, somebody might have lost a job. I've known people in all of these circumstances over the last uh, couple weeks and so. And so I uh, just um, ask that if there is anything in your life to, to, to pour that out, to, to post that. Um, uh, be vulnerable. Uh, if not, you can put it on my uh, messenger and I'll see that and I will uh, certainly want to pray for you um, privately. And so it's up to you. I've seen this has been shared a few times already. So I'm going to get started. Um, essentially, uh, the goal here today is for me to uh, share with you um, an essential truth. And that is um, to to don't waste the coronavirus. More specifically, don't waste the quarantine, right? Um, we are all trying to be responsible um, citizens, um, caring for our neighbors. And, and by doing that, we are self-quarantining to keep ourselves out of harm's way. But 
uh, there's no harm in reaching out to people and saying, hey, what are your needs? And as I've been on the phone with people and as I've sent emails and talked with folks, uh, there are people with real needs and people are saying, hey, right now I could, I could use some help in this area. I've had neighbors say, hey, I've got an elderly neighbor next door uh, and she called me up and said, hey, my, my vehicle is broken down. I need a ride to the store. Can you give me a ride to the store? And I said, absolutely, I would love to. She's like, I'm not sick, don't worry. It's like, I'm not worried about sickness. I'm worried that you're being taken care of. And so I gave her a ride to the store, uh, was able to help her um, pick up some things and, and bring it back home. And that those are the type of things that we can do for one another, right? Um, we, we as Christians should not have a spirit of fear, um, but the Spirit of God. And so, uh, though we do need to be cautious and wise and, um, and heed um, wisdom from uh, our authorities, uh, as I think the Scriptures would teach us, we also don't need to have a spirit of fear, right? So, uh, our home uh, is with uh, Christ. It's not on this earth. We are not... Uh, of this earth. We are strangers and aliens. And so if you're a believer with me today, you are a stranger and an alien. You should not have fear. And I implore you, put your hope in Christ. And if you're not with um, um, Christ, if you're not a believer in Jesus, if you not follow him and trust your, him for your salvation, I understand that there's going to be fear, right? There's fear of, of death, what's to come, um, there's fear of loss of family and life and, and so many other things. And so I, I, I get that fear exists in this world. And we do have reasons for fear. So so don't hear me saying we don't have reasons for fear. We, we definitely have a reason to fear. Um, there, a sickness is a reason to fear. Death is, is a reason to fear. However, in Christ, um, we have a reason for hope. And so fear does not chase us um, into hiding. Okay, so that's just um, that's just my statement there, and I just want to say, uh, keep that in mind. Write it down. Don't waste the coronavirus. Don't waste the quarantine. However you want to word it, write it down. Uh, we have an opportunity to not only love God but love our neighbor. And uh, Jesus was asked, um, "What are what is the greatest commandment?" by the Pharisees. And they're trying to wedge him into a hole. And the fact is, he, he was able to take a look at what they were um, asking and know uh, the heart of what they're asking. And, and he said, and I'm going to paraphrase here, I don't have the Bible open in front of me or anything, but he said, um, first to love God, um, and then to love your neighbors, right? Uh, so so the first great, the greatest commandment is to love God as yourself. Uh, I mean, so to love God with all your heart, mind, and soul, right? And the second is to love your neighbor as yourself. And so those are the two great things. And not only that, he says, if you do those two things, you would have uh, com completed the whole law. You would have fulfilled all of it, right? So uh, we have uh, two impossible tasks set up um, before us. Um, but what we can do is trust Christ to help us do both of those things. And so that's what we're going to be praying about tonight. Um, that's what we're going to be asking God and his faithfulness for. And, um, and, and where we're not faithful, we get to say, that's okay, God, um, you are faithful. And so, um, I trust in you and I hope in you. And so for those of you who may be watching, who may not know, um, uh, the good news, the gospel of Jesus, just real briefly, um, we are sinners. Um, none of us have lived a perfect life. We have sinned against a, uh, a holy and righteous God and King. And so um, the, the, the payment of sin is death. And so because death has entered the world, because we have sinned, uh, the penalty of that uh, sin is death, okay? Uh, but, but instead of our death, um, God sent his only son, Jesus, a part of the Godhead, to earth to be born perfect, to live a perfect life, to die a perfect death on our behalf so that we might have life and have it to the fullest, right? But he did not stay dead. He rose from the grave and ascended into heaven after spending 40 days with his people, right? And, and, and preached a lot and talked with a lot of people. But, but he ascended into heaven and now sits at the right hand of God. That is the good news. And the good news also is that he is coming back. He, he, he's not staying away. 
Look, we, we as, as Christians, look forward to the time he comes back. We, we're not afraid that he's going to um, not return. So, so when the coronavirus comes, I mean, I, I was talking to my kids uh, about what Paul said today. And we're talking about death and, and life and what's going on and, and all these things are happening. And, and, and Paul was approached um, and, and they were going to kill him. And um, Paul, said, Paul said, great, to die is gain. I get to be with God. And, and they're like, well, that's confusing. I don't know who to do that, but you're crazy. And so what we're going to do is let you live. And he's like, fantastic. To live is Christ. And, and they couldn't get this guy um, down. I mean, he had hope. He had hope in Jesus. He had hope in his salvation. He had hope in God. And so my hope for you is that you would have hope in God and that you would not um, be dismayed. And we all find ourselves in, in, in times, whether it's uh, frustrations with being in close quarters all the time with your family or uh, just not being able to be free in a free society like we're used to or um, dealing with addictions uh, or any other thing that happens uh, when we struggle, okay? Um, hope in Christ. Uh, let me know. Have you put your trust in Christ? Have you not? Do you have questions? Whatever the answer is there, let me know. I can help walk you through these things, right? So right now we're going to pray. Um, if anybody has any prayer requests, I haven't seen any pop up over here, um, but please let me know and I will certainly be praying for you. Um, but right now, if you would get with me and, and bow your heads and, and close your eyes. We, we don't do that because it's, it's a rule or anything. It's just, for me, it helps to focus me and to... Um, and so I'm not distracted. I'm easily distracted. And I don't know about you, but, uh, so we're going to close our heads and, um, I'm sorry, bow our heads and close our eyes and, uh, and pray, uh, for, uh, God to do a work, um, with his people. So father in heaven, we love you. And we just thank you for, uh, just an opportunity. Uh, we live in a world when even as disease plagues us, God, uh, we can still be connected through technology. Um, that technology has certainly been invented by man, but by inspiration from you, by the knowledge of you. In fact, you hold all things together and uh, with the word of your mouth. And so we just thank you that we're able to meet even over um, these means. And so, God, I just ask that you would... Uh, uh, penetrate the hearts of your um, children, the men and women uh, listening right now. I pray that you would help uh, help us to put our trust and our hope in you, regardless of the circumstance, regardless of the financial burdens that are facing us, regardless of whether or not we've lost our jobs or we're sick ourselves or we know somebody who is. I pray that we would lean on you for all the things that we need. And, and Lord, we know that you're sovereign. Um, and that brings about a lot of questions for us in these times. We don't know what that means or, or how that works out. And if a sovereign God allows such things. And, and so, Lord, uh, help us to even in the uncertainty press into you and just say, God is good. I don't understand, but I know that God is good. And so, Lord, uh, I pray for those right now who are overwhelmed by burden. Um, who have anxiety, who have a heavy yoke, Lord. I just pray uh, right now for them, as your word says, uh, for us to cast our burdens upon you, uh, Lord. I pray that we would do that. I pray that we would not uh, fear, but trust. I pray that we would um, be strong. And, uh, and Lord, that we would uh, find ways to serve one another. Find ways to whether it's getting a gift card to a restaurant for a neighbor or, um, you know, working on somebody's car. I, I don't know. Whatever, whatever. Um, there's a lot of gifts and talents that people have that are listening tonight. And I just pray that you would speak to their hearts in, in particular in their unique way um, to see how they can serve their neighbor and love one another. And so, uh, God, I pray uh, that we would not live in fear, but we would trust in you. In Jesus' name, amen. So um, that's what we got. Sorry, I'm on my car. It's kind of a weird place, but uh, just got home a few minutes ago. So uh, listen, I think this is going to be up uh, so you can keep commenting and, and um, discussing this. Um, let me know. Uh, do you agree? Uh, do you disagree? Do you have any questions? 
Uh, let's open up a dialogue here. If there, if, if you want prayer and you are asking uh, for prayer, you can put it in the comments uh, where a lot of people can see it and a lot of people can be praying for you. You can message me directly and I'll uh, do the same. And so um, thank you for joining me. Uh, and I hope everything is going well with you. And I look forward to uh, talking uh, with you all soon. All right. Good night.